All right, for today's video review, we're gonna be taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom, Autobot Slammer. And uh, yeah, this is a, a pretty cool little figure. It kind of feels like it's been ages since I've actually gotten like a new mold. I mean, I guess it wasn't that long ago that I had Tigatron, and but like Tigatron just kind of feels like an upscaled version of Cheetor, even though he is technically a new mold. And like before that, I think was Waspinator, who also feels very similar to the previous iteration of Waspinator. So it hasn't been that long since I've gotten a new mold, but it definitely kind of feels like it's been a while since I've messed with a completely new figure. But uh, yeah, this is a Slammer here in his little tank mode. Looks pretty cool. If you're unfamiliar with who Slammer is, basically, originally he was one of the little extra bits that came with the uh, original G1 Metroplex. And I don't think the original one had a robot mode. I think it just transformed from a tank to a like a tower for the city mode. So they've given uh they've given Slammer here the weaponizer treatment and uh and given him a robot mode, which is pretty cool. And uh yeah, he looks really nice in his little tank mode. He does have three rolling wheels underneath that um eh, kind of work. I mean, if you're really pushing him down to the ground, they do rotate, but it doesn't like roll all that well. He mostly just slides across the ground, which is fine. It's a nice little tank mode and it's very, you know. It's kind of compact and meaty, which is pretty fun. Um, it, for comparisons, here he is just for a standard size comparison with uh, Kingdom Sideswipe. Uh, here he is with the two other Autobot weaponizers that we've gotten, Cog and Six Gun, just so you can see what he looks like with them. And then here he is with the two uh, Decepticon uh, weaponizers, Brunt and Fast Track, just so you can see what it, what he looks like with them. But uh, yeah, it's a it's a pretty nice little tank mode overall. Um, in terms of like articulation or anything, you can't really do a whole lot with the turret. It does sort of tab in place. You can, if you want, like kind of lift it up. Um, and it's basically these two bits end up being the arms in robot mode, and they're both pegged in back here. So you can kind of use those joints to like rotate it to the side at an angle sort of and you know that that kind of works it's just that the the arms aren't really actually pegged together they're just held together by this turret piece which does not really uh stay in place all too well so like eh you know it kind of just comes apart when you move it side to side but if you're careful with it you can get it into some poses but it does have like dedicated places to kind of like tab and sit in place here but uh yeah i like the tank mode a lot um for transformation of course he's another one of the weaponizers so he's a huge parts former so if that's something that that uh you know turns you off then this is probably not the figure for you but I, I don't mind it. It's part of the whole gimmick. And then he does the whole, you know, like weaponizer thing where he can make weapons for other figures, which is pretty cool. But to start off transformation, uh, first thing you want to do is uh, take this little waist piece and rotate it down like that and then rotate it around. Then you want to take the whole front section and just unpeg it like that. Uh, we can take the head and rotate it out of the body and we'll put that to the side for now. Uh, you want to just take the barrel of the turret here and unpeg it and then unpeg it from this little piece here. We'll put those to the side for now as well. Uh, you want to lift up the uh, the remainder of the turret and then you want to take these side sections and kind of wiggle them back and forth just to uh, unpeg them from the side here. I think the instructions actually want you to just like take the arms off and then plug them back on later, but th these are the pieces that are connected to in that orientation in robot mode. So I don't usually bother with that. I just kind of rotate these pieces off around them. And then with each of these pieces, you wanna take this section here, rotate it like that. And then the uh, the thigh is kind of inside the lower leg here. And then you wanna take that and these will be his robot mode legs. So just do that for each piece here, rotate out the thighs and peg it in just like that. And then we can stand them up here in the corner. Uh, then you wanna take the arm sections and rotate them from the rest of the treads or rotate them, remove them from the rest of the treads and then just unpeg them and then rotate them down like that and peg them into the body. And then uh, this, this piece, uh, you can take the treads off and use them as a weapon, but by default, it kind of just has it as a, a backpack on the back here. And then with the, uh, the barrel and this little piece, they want you to just take this piece and plug it into these two pegs on the backpack there and then take the barrel and plug it into one of these pegs on the hand here to give him like a hand cannon. And that's that's kind of cool. I don't mind that. Um, I, I sort of think that this looks a little bit awkward. So what I tend to do is uh, leave the barrel attached to this little connection piece and uh, and peg it on like a uh, like an arm cannon. I like that look a little bit better, but obviously with these weaponizers, you can kind of, you know, customize it however you want. And then, you know, I have it so it's like 
this is when he's using his weapon, he has it out like that. And then when he's not using his weapon, he just had, has it up like that. And I think that looks fairly good for, uh, you know, some weapon storage. Uh, another thing you can do, this is really more for the weaponizer mode, but you know, you can do this for him too, is uh, you can take off the backpack here and then take the treads off of this piece and then just plug this back in. Uh, you do need the little uh, connection piece for this. Uh, and then take these bits and peg them together like that. And then with the two pegs down here, peg them onto this and it gives them a little like chainsaw sword, which is pretty cool. I mean, you don't have to use it as a sword. You can also like peg it into his arm like that, but that's a pretty cool option. It's, um, it's a little strange to me because like, we're only pretending, right? That the, the treads are just half like for his vehicle mode, he does need a complete set of treads to go along. So I don't know how they would cut in half for transformation. Um, and like, I guess like the, the rest of the treads could theoretically be stored in the legs somewhere from like where they are underneath. But like in vehicle mode, you know, they, they just sit underneath the thing like this. So it, it creates the illusion that the treads are going into the thing. But then when you do it for transformation, you take this off. So I, I don't know if that might just be a thing that, that only I care about, but it sort of feels like cheating adjacent, whereas, like, I mean, we do have to pretend that there are the rest of the treads somewhere, right? So then how do they come off with half and then plug into each other? I'm not entirely sure that works, but eh, whatever. It's just sort of a thing that sticks out to me, but it's not a real problem. <laughs> just sort of a weird, I don't know, transformer thought experiment, but... Either way, it is pretty cool to give him like a, a chainsaw sword, and that's a pretty cool weapon for uh, for other figures as well. But for now, we'll just put those back on uh, to the back here. Uh, is this the right side? Yes, it is. Come on. There we go. And his arm fell off. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, in terms of articulation, once I get his uh, his arm cannon back on here, the head is uh, on a ball joint and it also has this panel where it kind of rotated back into the body. So you can kind of get him looking up a little bit more without the ball joint. It does, I wish it kind of locked in place a little bit more because it is easy to kind of push that back in and have him sort of like compressed his head into the body a little bit, but otherwise just, you know, normal ball joint rotation. The, uh, the shoulders here, obviously just pegged in so they can rotate around like that, rotate out to the side. He's got a, a bicep swivel for where this piece just pegs in. Uh, about 90 degrees of bend at the elbow there. Uh, he has a waist joint and then also the uh, the hinge that this is attached to can also bend back a little bit for a bit of like a, you know, backwards ab crunch. And um, I find that this joint is a little bit loose. I kind of, you know, I, I did try like tightening uh, this screw to kind of tighten it up a little bit and it doesn't seem to have helped a whole lot. It's not too bad when you just have them standing straight up. Like it doesn't like flop around or anything like that. But when you're messing with them, it is very easy to kind of like you know, rotate that out of whack um, for the, uh, did I say he's got a waist swivel? He's got a waist swivel. Uh, for the hips, they're just the, you know, universal joints that can rotate back and forward and then out to the side. He's got a thigh swivel from where it pegs in right there. He's got a really deep knee bend from where these like go back into the uh, legs for transformation. And then also for transformation, it gives him a bit of an ankle tilt. Um, now, <laughs> they say that this figure is a, is a partial uh like retool of ironworks and technically that's true because his uh his upper thigh sections that rotate into the legs and the bits that they connect to like the like the hips themselves are both the same pieces that were on ironworks but that's really it um so i guess technically he does share parts with ironworks but for the most part he's a completely different figure with a completely different transformation like the waist pieces aren't even the same they don't even attach the same way and the legs the lower legs are not the same and like obviously they turn into very different things so I, yeah technically he does share a couple parts with ironworks but that's really it uh, is just those uh the upper legs there but uh yeah here he is again with uh, Kingdom Sideswipe, just for that standard size comparison. So pretty average size deluxe there. And then let's bring on all the other weaponizers. Here is Cog and Six Gun and Fast Track and Brunt, just to get all five of them there together. And uh, yeah, it's a pretty good looking group. Obviously, you know, three of them are Autobots and two of them are Decepticons, but pretty cool. 
I think they all look pretty good together. Uh, but yeah, uh, he's a pretty good figure overall. Um, the one last thing to talk about with him is obviously the, the weaponizer feature. So I'm just going to do a little rundown here of like just knowing out what all the parts actually are. Uh, we've got the, uh, the barrel there and this little connector bit uh, for the backpack here. We take that off. We've got the two tread pieces and then this connection piece. We've got the, uh, the lower arms there, the shoulder blocks. We've got the, the bit with the head and the body on it like that. And we've got the waist section and the two legs. So there's some pretty fun stuff we can do with these. Obviously, the, the one really cool thing you can do with the treads is make that chainsaw sword. I think that works pretty well. Uh, the little shoulder blocks have like some sculpting that sort of looks like missile uh, missile launchers or something like that. And then on the inside of the legs, or I guess it would be the outside of the legs, inside of the tank, they do have uh, missile racks on the, uh, on the lower leg sections there, which is pretty cool. And then... This piece here, I don't, I haven't really found anything super useful for this, but it does have this fold out bit with a peg on the inside, which just makes it easier to uh, to connect things. And if we bring back side swipe here, some fun stuff that we can do. These uh, the arm pieces actually make really good uh, feet extensions to just give a a bit of height there. So that's one cool thing. We can give them the uh, the chainsaw sword. Um, and then there's a few different things you can do here with the uh, with the backpack section. Uh, you can either use this piece or this piece to then connect the, the waist piece to give them like missile racks over the shoulders. Uh, for now, I guess let's do this guy here. So we can take that and then peg on these uh, these missile racks and then plug it, peg it onto his back there. Come on. You can either do it like that or you can peg them in on the uh, on the other side of the uh, the leg pieces so they sit a little bit lower. It's a little bit more streamlined, but then they do overlap with his shoulders a little bit. Um, and then what can we do here? Let's take these pieces here. We could just add those to his shoulders to give him some extra missile launchers on his shoulders. And then take this piece here and just peg the barrel onto it and give him a uh, an arm cannon there. It's, it is asymmetrical on there, but Otherwise, I think that's a pretty cool weaponized mode. I really like that, like, you know, with some of the weaponizers, there's always, like, a few bits left over that, like, don't really work in and of themselves as weapons. But with him, most of them are, are pretty, you know, usable as weapons or, like, extension bits or at least connection pieces. Like, it's, you know, the waist piece, I guess, kind of sits off to the side if you're not using it for something like this. And the body piece, like, there's some stuff you can do with it, but it, it is mostly just a chunk that you have to <laughs> that you have to peg on somewhere, which is fine. Uh, another thing you could do is, uh, you know, swap these bits so that uh, this is the piece that you're having with the, uh, with the, uh, the feet missile launcher things here. So wait, how do we do this? Like that? No. How did I, I had this before in some way. Oh, you know what? I think I just had this pegged onto that and then did it like that. But then you'd have to use the, uh, do something else with the body piece. Just, you know, as an option, you can, you can do stuff like that. Uh, there's no real way. I wish there was like some way to peg this into it, a lot of things, because I think that would make a pretty cool weapon. But unfortunately, there's not really any way to to do that. Um, so like you could just, you know, kind of have this as like a big, you know, hammer of some sort. It's not really a hammer, just like for a block for him to swing around. And then you could plug in the uh, take these and plug these in here so that it has, um, you know, treat this like the the barrel of the the cannon it's it's an option i think that the other one that i showed you is a little bit more elegant because then you don't really have anything to do with with this i think you can just peg it in somewhere just kind of <laughs> off to the side but you know just for an option to actually use the main body piece as some kind of gun it's not the most elegant thing in the world but it, it kind of works. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, I, I think that like you can kind of play around with this. You can use the components of the other weaponizers and like combine them. There's lots of different things that you can do. This is just sort of like a, a bare bones, simple option that I came up with. But overall, I think he's a pretty fun figure to mess around with. Obviously, if you're not really into like the whole weaponizer play pattern, um, then, you know, this figure probably doesn't do a whole lot for you. I mean, it does look nice in robot mode and tank mode, but like part of the whole thing with him is you're supposed to be kind of like 
using this gimmick to give all your figures different weapons and stuff like that. It's definitely like a, a play pattern that you can get into, but you know, that's not going to be everyone's shtick. And a lot of people are just kind of turned off by the, uh, by the parts forming in general. And I get that, but since it's part of this sort of play pattern, I don't really mind it. If it really like, you know, goes wholesale into the, uh, into the, uh, the parts forming, then it, it doesn't really matter to me personally. I get that, you know, it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it, it's fun nonetheless. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, if I'm, while I'm struggling here to, to get this oriented correctly, uh, that's pretty much all there is to them. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And without further ado, here we have Transformers War for Cybertron Kingdom Autobot Slammer.